Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to show you the best ways to play the Legend of Spyro Trilogy on PC. Before we begin, I need to make a few things clear and tell you what this video will be about. This video is going to be me showcasing what I believe to be the best versions of these games available on PC. Some people might disagree with the versions I will choose, and that is completely fine. For the first two games, it doesn't matter that much which version you play, but some versions do have advantages over others. But at the end of the day, what matters is that you are playing the version you are most satisfied with. I will only cover the main console titles, but in case you need to know which emulator is best for the handheld games, it's on screen right now. Secondly, this video is not going to show you how to obtain these games legally or illegally. There are plenty of sources out there that can tell you how to obtain these games, so just look it up on YouTube somewhere on how to obtain them, and yeah. You're on your own with this one is what I'm trying to say. Sorry. The only way to play the Legend of Spyro games on your computer is via emulation or via an emulator, so this video does expect you to have some form of knowledge of how emulators work. In case you don't, I will link guides to each emulator I will talk about in this video, which is the Dolphin emulator, the PCSX2 emulator, the RPCS3 emulator, and the Senior Canary emulator. It's very important that it's the Senior Canary version and not the original version. It's very important, trust me. This video also expects you to have somewhat of a decent computer. If you have a computer that's either old or don't have the best specs, then the PS3 version and the Xbox 360 version of Dawn of the Dragon may be out of the question. And finally, I want to state that as a human being, I can make mistakes. So if you see a mistake I made in this video, aside from being born that is, then please tell me in the comments. When all of this said, let's finally get started. Timestamps for each of the games will be on screen and be down where the video player is. With all of this said, let's get started with A New Beginning and Internal Night. The best version of A New Beginning that is out there is in my opinion the GameCube version. The GameCube version on its emulator Dolphin will allow you to play the game at 60 FPS. The PS2 version actually allows you to play the game at 120 FPS, though it's not perfect and I'm not at all good with PCSX2 the way I am with Dolphin, so for this video I'm using Dolphin. A New Beginning is actually one of the few GameCube games out there to already have a widescreen mode within the game without having to use additional codes. Speaking of codes, the way we're going to achieve 60 FPS is via a Gecko code. If you don't know what a gecko code is, they are basically codes that you can enable to change certain small aspects of GameCube games. Think of them as another form of cheat codes like Action Replay. In the description of this video you will see a section called Gecko Codes with one code for a new beginning and Eternal Night. These are codes that will make the games play at 60fps. Here's how to activate them. Copy each respective code for each respective game. Once you are in Dolphin, right click on a new beginning or eternal night and click on properties. Go over to the Gecko Codes tab and click on add new code. Paste the code where it's supposed to be and give it a name so you know it's the right code. And there we go. You might see a message beforehand about disabling cheats, so... So if you have not enabled cheats then it's recommended to do so. And after that, everything is set up with a new beginning. There's only one glitch that happens due to the 60fps code, where one cutscene will be kinda of fucked up, but except for that, it's pretty good. It doesn't really crash or anything from what I've seen, and it seems pretty decent. Though for Eternal Night, we have one final step we need to do. We have to set up our controls, which is more complicated than setting up, for example, a new beginnings controls, since that just requires the GameCube controller. You can play Eternal Night using your real Wii mode with nunchuck and motion controls, or you can set up the controller you usually use like an Xbox One controller for example. If you are using a normal controller, go over to the controllers tab, go down to the Wii section, and set player 1 to emulated Wiimote. Obviously if you have a real Wiimote then set it as a real Wiimote, but this tutorial is going to assume that you are using a normal controller. Otherwise, there will be a guide on how to connect your Wii mode in the description as well. Click on Configure. Look to the right where it says Extension. 
change it from None to Wii Classic Controller. Now go over to the Extension tab and input the controls that fits your controller. This is usually the layout I recommend for the most popular controllers out there. Make sure to also calibrate the left and right stick just in case. With that done, go back over to the General and Options tab and set a button you haven't used yet to the A button on the Wiimote. This is just in case the game demands input from the Wiimote and not the classic controller. When all the buttons are set, go over to the box in the top right and type in a name for the profile. Click save and then click load just in case and it should work. If you have multiple Wii games with other control styles, then I recommend setting a hotkey that changes the profile that you're using. There are three main contenders of what version of Dawn of the Dragon you should play. If you have a decent computer and have similar specs to mine, then the RPCS3 and Cinea Canary versions are the best versions out there. However, if you don't have that powerful of a computer, then the PS2 version is still a good version of the game. I don't recommend the Wii version at all due to forced motion controls, unless that is something you want. For this segment, I am going to focus on the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions. There are pros and cons with each version. The Xbox 360 version doesn't look as good, but you can play the game in whatever frame rate your computer can handle, aka over 60 FPS. The PS3 versions can have textures be rendered at higher resolutions than 720p. This version of the game also has optional dog shit motion controls if you want to play around with them for some reason. And it can technically play the game at over 60 FPS, but the emulator crashes for me for some reason. I'll make a pinned comment under this video in the future if I have found a fix for this. Whatever the case, if you don't care for any of these changes, then choose based on what system you're most interested in and in which part of your computer is better. RPCS3 favors the usage of your CPU, while Senior Canary favors the usage of your GPU. If you don't know what to choose, then I would just go with Senior Canary. It's sort of a safe bet. If you have decided which emulator you're going with, then please skip to one of these time codes listed here. The best settings for the Senia Canary version is in your config file. Open the folder where you have Senia, and you should see a config file. If you do not see it, then try booting the game up once, close it, and then go back into the folder. Open the config file with a notepad. The settings we want to change are the audio settings and the video settings. The audio settings are the first thing you see and they are at the top of the page. Set max queued frames to free. This makes it so you're not getting any audio delay. However, don't put it any lower than free or you might fuck up the emulator. Next are the video settings which are lower down in the notepad file. We're going to start with the resolution. The highest you can set it to is 1080p. The next setting we're going to change is VSync. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, aka 1 over 60 Hz, then set it to off. But if you don't and you have a normal 60 Hz monitor, then set it to on. And that's it for Senia. If you notice that the graphics are fucked up in the tile screen, it's normal. Hit F5 and it will fix the texture glitches. You have to press it every time you start the game up, but after that it's smooth sailing. If you notice that your PC is more hot and loud than usual, and you experience lag with your computer, try to reduce some of the settings or play the PS2 version if it turns out your computer can't handle this version of the game. For RPCS3, right click on Dawn of the Dragon in the program and go to Properties. After that, just copy these settings. If the game doesn't load, then perhaps changing the video driver will fix the trick. It has happened with me a few times. If you notice that your PC is more hot and loud than usual, and you experience lag with your computer, then try to reduce some of the settings or play the PS2 version if it turns out your computer can't handle this version of the game. And with that, the video is finally done. 
I'm planning to do another video like this for the other Spyro games, but for now I hope this was useful to everybody that is planning on playing these games either for the first time or replaying them in the best way they can. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it helpful and I will see you all next time. See you guys then.